Welcome to the Leader Impact Podcast. We are a community of leaders with a network in over 350 cities around the world dedicated to optimizing our personal, professional, and spiritual lives to have impact. This show is where we have a chance to listen and engage with leaders who are living this out. We love talking with leaders, so if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions to make this show even better, please let us know. The best way to stay connected in Canada is through our newsletter at leaderimpact.ca or on social media at Leader Impact. If you're listening from outside of Canada, check out our website at leaderimpact.com. I'm your host, Lisa Peters, and our guest today is Fausto Estrada. Fausto is a professional engineer from Honduras who has resided in Canada since 2013 and currently owns a construction management firm called EOS Consulting Incorporated. Registered with the Association of Professional Engineers and Geoscientists of Alberta, Fausto has extensive leadership and project management experience in construction for modular, residential, commercial, and light industrial projects. His passion is leading others to find their purpose in life through faith and a strong sense of community, understanding the most important asset we have in life is humanity. In his free time, he likes reading, hiking, and watching movies with his wife and two boys. Today, we are going to chat to Fausto about life. Because sometimes life just isn't fair and our greatest lessons are not always in the winds. Welcome to the show, Fausto. Thank you so much, Lisa. Oh, I'm kind of excited about this topic um, because I was just in actually your city on the weekend and uh, oh, wow. in a hot, yeah, in a hot, and I didn't, I was going to call you, but I just, we were too busy losing. I'll just get right to the point. And um, <laughs> I think we play second last. So talk about, you know, life and losing. And I was so proud of the boys, the way they accepted the loss, the way the coaches handled the loss, the parents, um, you know, we, we handled it so well. And I used to say, um, you know, uh, you win or you, you win or you lose or you win with grace, lose with grace. I used to say that to my son and I've changed that to be you win or you learn. Because, because, you know, I, I think as he's, as he's grown up, he's 18 now or 17 now, um, you have to understand your contribution to the loss. You know, when he was a kid, he just had it to be nice, you know, just win with grace, lose with grace. But now, you know what, you need to understand and move forward. So super excited to have you today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. And yeah, let me start with that, actually. And yeah, unfortunately, one of the things that I would like to say is, a lot of the lessons that we learn through life are unfortunately, you know, happening after we make some mistakes. <laughs> and, you know, it's part of life. We're human. And, you know, and that's what exactly happened to me. Yeah. So I am excited to hear your story. I have seen a few um, different interviews with you, but I, uh, I haven't seen everything. So I, I know that you came to Canada in 2013. So I'm really right. excited to hear just a little bit about your journey. Like, how did it happen? How did you get to Canada? Well, it, ha it started with mistakes. So essentially, mm -hmm. um, I happened to, to grow up in Honduras and, and, I, and I was just a, a terrible teenager. It started since I was very early, you know, and, and, and in, in the pursuit of my own terrible decisions, I, I ended up getting married too young uh, and I didn't obviously uh, did things right. And, and after a year, I got divorced. Um, once you go through situations like that, you're so young, you just went through that episode in your life, you, you're wondering what what is next, you know? So you, you go through hell and and then and end up losing everything because you know what happened to me is I ended up losing not only my wife, but my apartment, my mm -hmm. possessions, all the things that I kind of had and, and and you know even my identity i mean i lost everything there and and so what happened next is i decided to commit suicide there was no reason oh. for me to there was no way for me to just go through life so uh, you know I, well, what am i even doing here when making that decision i was in the process of you know thinking how am i gonna get through this and how am i even gonna get through the next you know, face and how to actually committing, you know, the suicidal process. And, and obviously you're scared, you don't know what to do, but the first thing that you look after is, okay, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do something good at least. So I went and bought, and bought a life insurance. Yeah. <laughs> so I could leave some money for my mom and, and my friends because they spent so much money trying to fix me in a way. And, and, and I just wanted to do it right. So I, I went and got these, uh, you know, like, you know, life insurance. I was 21, 22. And fortunately, my, ma my mom found out. 
So they were living in the U.S. By, like, you know, when that happened already. And so they found out and my dad came immediately to Honduras. Like, he, like they found out on a Thursday. And then on the Friday, my dad was already in Honduras. Like, you know, you know, wow. so, so spending some time with me. So, yeah, it was it was kind of a, a bit of an emotional process. And, and, you know, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. But, yeah, it started right there. And that's when my dad actually sat down with me and said, listen, I you don't need to struggle alone. Um, you have your dad, you have your parents who are going to support you no matter what, where you are and what, if you, even if you hit rock bottom, right? I mean, we're going to be here for you. So there's an opportunity, go to Canada. I was already a permanent resident back then. So he said, you're a permanent resident already, move to Canada. We'll pay the tickets. We'll give you something so you can start over there, but you need to leave now. And so that's when I actually uh, decided to leave Honduras and move to Canada with only $2,000 in my pocket and just a ton of luck. <laughs> wow. I can't believe, I mean, I don't know how you pick up your life, you know, and move that quickly. That's incredible. And, and to have yeah. your dad, I mean, support, it's beautiful. Yeah, it, it was great. Yeah, no, it was great. It was one of those moments in which I was like, okay, I need, I need, I needed help. I needed something. Otherwise, I mean, the the outcome would have been very different. Put it this way, I wouldn't be here today if it would yeah. if, if that wouldn't happen in my life. Yeah. So does the story continue very positively? You come to Canada because you were a um a civil engineer, you graduated with honors in Honduras. You came here and you got a job or like right away or <laughs> Not at all. Now it was tough. I mean, you know how it is. I mean, I'm an immigrant. Now I came with a big ego. I was 21. I wanted to eat the world, you know, you know, in 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 a in a lunch basket, right? I mean, like it, it was like my ego was very very big, and and I needed I needed some lessons. So you know, um, uh, in 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 reality, I was thinking like, okay, I'm coming to a first world country. I can be uh, you know, an engineer here. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure I can do it. I'm a permanent resident. I do speak the language. I mean, it's not that I had any of those issues. I mean, I did speak the language. So what am I doing now? But in reality, uh, I needed to be humble. So how do you get that? I mean, how do you, how do you get someone to be humbled? So you, you got a humiliating, you, you, you get a humiliating process, right? In order to get that, you oh. know, Humbly man within you, you have to go through something like that. So, yeah, one day, uh, you know, I, I was probably, uh, I would say I was a week away from starving to death because <laughs> I had the $2,000. But put it this way, I mean, $2,000, you know, I brought $2,000. I had to give $500 for deposit, $500 for a room for rent. I had 1000 Thousand lasted probably, you know, a month and a half to two months. So I was already a week before I, I didn't have any money. I had ran out of money. And my parents decided, like, you are a man. <laughs> you, you are a man now. So figure it out. You have to figure it out. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I was trying. I needed to find something. I do remember a friend of mine told me like, hey, they are looking for people at this Catholic, uh, you know, center of immigrants. So I went there and I met a guy who told me like, uh, hey, are you good at anything? Um, in which I said, of, of course not. I mean, I'm an engineer. And he said, well, I mean, you are not going to get an engineering job just so you know. I mean, you wow. need to go through the process. So um, before you get to that process of being an engineer, I mean, can you paint? And I said, well, I painted my room once when I was a teenager. And he said, well, say that you are a painter. I showed up next day to this one place and I said, I'm a painter. They hired me $16 per hour. I remember that. It was pretty good because they thought I was a painter. Guess what happened? First day of work. I'm the painter. You know, what are you expecting out of a painter? You know that at least he knows how to paint, right? Well, yeah. I was going to pretend I did that and, and at least that I knew how to paint. So I watched a few videos on YouTube on how to paint. But I forgot, I forgot the basic one. How to open the bucket of paint. Oh my goodness. That's hard. I don't even know. I don't well, paint it's, so. <laughs> Oh my goodness. It was just it, like, can you imagine a painter telling you that I know how to paint and not even know how to open a bucket oh, of paint? Yeah. That was just, yeah. it was ridiculous. It was awful. And 
I remember my, I, there was a Vietnamese uh, a guy who, who was my, my boss, like he was my boss. And, and when he saw me struggling opening this bucket of paint, because you got to unstrap the whole perimeter, the, the whole perimeter of the bucket of paint. Okay. And then you got to lift it, you know, side. It, it's it, like you have to leave each like, you know, uh, I don't even know how they are called. But anyways, you do it. It's a process. I mean, it's not that easy. So you do it like that. And, and, and when he saw me not doing it because I didn't even know how to open it, he started yelling at me. I thought, oh, oh okay, I just got this job and I'm, not, I'm now getting fired. But it happened to be that he actually didn't fire me. Next day, he told me, like, you are not a painter, so I'm promoting you. I'm oh, like, promotion. Yeah, right? you're cleaning all my, now you're cleaning my toilets. Oh, my goodness. I was. It was this. It was a disaster. Well, at least you had a job. <laughs> I had yeah. a job. Yeah, I, I had a job, but it was it was not the way I expected it to be. Right. So yeah. uh, right after that, my process began. I really needed to be humbled. So I really needed yeah. to go through that process, and and my ego needed to come down. And and yeah, I mean, he insulted me in two languages. It was so awkward. Ooh. You know, because obviously he was Vietnamese, so <laughs> that was where the battle began. And but but I learned my lesson through that. And 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 of course, if we wouldn't be because of that, I would never have learned what I needed to learn. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a great story, Fausto. So um, you know, skipping ahead, because you probably, I mean, you ultimately probably got into construction, but you owned. Uh, uh, I mean, your professional life, you owned the construction management firm, EOS and consulting, mm -hmm. and you have been put in a leadership position. You are managing some large scale projects. So my question really is, um, what is the hardest part of leading for you now? Because I mean, you were once that non painter and got yelled at in two languages. And you know, that person was supposed to be leading you. But now you're the leader. And so I just wonder, what is the hardest part of leading, leading for you? Do what I say. Oh. Like essentially walking my my talk, uh, I think that is the hardest part for any leader. Is like essentially when you lead, typically the first person you need to start leading is yourself. Um, I, I I I I do have a greater responsibility, and and that makes me more accountable, right? So I would say that leading the the first person that you need to start leading is is you, and then you know when you walk the talk, when you, when you do it properly, when you follow, you know, the rules and when you are obedient to your own rules, because you got to make up some rules, you got to have boundaries, which are healthy for organizations. Then, you know, people follow. Yeah. Um, so number one, you remind me of uh, currently in leader impact, we're studying boundaries by Dr. Henry cloud. I don't know if you have done that one, but an amazing book. Guy. Wow. Because I'm now reflecting on how I was raised and, you know, with boundaries or without. And, and now I have children. So again, you know, you comment, and I think of how am I raising my kids? How am I teaching them? I mean, I am, I am a leader in this house. Uh, you know, they're looking at me, I have to walk the walk, like I have to be a I have to step up. So that is a great lesson. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing that. So I, I know we wanted to talk, you know, life and, and losing. And I know that, um, as tough as losing is, we all know that there's value in it. We know that. Um, really hard to get that through our heads. But I was wondering if you could share some experiences of, of what you have gained from losing. I think you have some stories there, probably. Yeah. Like, you know, there are, I think I would, I would share like three things and three principles that came out of, okay. you know, the stories. I can, I can share, you know, many stories but i think if if i can you know relate to what losing means and what i get what i have gained you know out of it i mean it's it's impressive actually what you learn when you go through fire when you when what you yeah. get when you go through difficulties right so i think once you go through you know uh, uh, uh processes like that i mean you got you got the opportunity to learn and 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 you can either you know whine about it and you might need some cheese for that <laughs> or you, uh, <laughs> or you just you know suck it up and move on and then just carry on and do it right and 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 the thing is, what, how do you do it though? I mean, what do you what can you get out of a, a bad circumstance? So I, I listed three things for me that are key every time I go through troubles and I know that I'm gonna get every time I I finish you know a period of those I get wealthier, I get wiser, I get better as a man yeah. so three things that i get out of a trouble is that i gain experience 
usually when 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 you are applying for a job, I mean, they ask you how many years of experience do you have. <laughs> I'll paraphrase the question. How many mistakes have you made and how much have you learned from those? That's experience. When, when they're asking you, okay, how many years of experience you have, they are essentially asking you, how many problems have you solved? How many issues have you had and how did you overcome those issues? That is exactly what happens. So you gain more experience because that, that's the value behind those many years that you put on your resume, like 15, 20, 10, how, like however many years you have of experience. But I mean, in the end, in essence, I mean, what it is, is they're telling you or they're asking you like Fausto or Lisa or whoever you are, tell me how many mistakes have you made? And, and that is experience. Yes. Okay. The second yeah. one will be wisdom. I think that the, the, the second biggest one is wisdom. As soon as you go, go out of, 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 you know, a trouble like that, I, you learn to be more in contact with reality. I mean, mm -hmm. I think you get into reality. I mean, you know exactly that, that you cannot make the same mistake again. And you learn how to make decisions, not in a rush and, of course, not in fear. So I think you, you grow and that gives you more reliability. I think that's something you get out of... You know, um, that's another value that you get once you get out of a trouble or a, or a bad circumstance. And number three, this one I was debating when I was thinking about it, but I, I think it's, it's the, one of the most important ones is vulnerability. Mm. When you go to trouble, you are able, you're now able to connect more with those you lead. I think you have a great opportunity to see yourself on other people's shoes. Okay, you went through trouble, you went through hell. That allows you to connect and understand the people. And that vulnerability isn't a sign of weakness, but 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 just a way of, of to be more authentic and, and 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 people trust you more. And so I think you know when when that happens, I mean, you you get to have the reality, you know, and and you get to expose, you know, who you are. And and yeah. and and I think you you become just better, you know. So yeah. um, a story, a short story. I mean, out of that, ah. I have many, but I, I mean, as a parent, <laughs> I think as a parent, I mean, it, 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 like the other day, my, my kid didn't want to do his room. I mean, he didn't want to do his, his, his chores and he's five. I understand that. <laughs> I've been five. I've been five already. I want to just play and, uh, and, uh, obviously connecting with him and letting him know that, you know, I, I did got, you know, the wood spoon sometimes, you know, from my parents when I disobeyed. Letting yeah. them know, hey, I, I needed to be corrected to become the man I am today. And and of course, you know, there are consequences when you don't when you disobey and 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 also that I don't like to go to work every day. There are days in which I'm like, I don't feel like going, but I still have to, even though I don't like it. So I think when you connect to that level and you have that certainty, and I'm bringing it to kids because sometimes we dismiss the fact that we can connect and be vulnerable with a kid. And, mm -hmm. and, and now that I'm a parent, I think that is, that has been the most important trigger to build relationships. In the end, we're here to build relationships and, and, and that is the proper way when you've gone through fire, you can connect to those and you can get them out of the fire as well. Yeah. Builds character too. <laughs> um, when you commented about, uh, you know, connecting, I think of, um, you know, we connect with people around us in a, in, when something goes wrong and when we lose, we need to reach out. I, I mean, you commented on that. And just connecting with more people, we meet more people. We, we increase our, our um, you know, our circle of influence, right? With failure. If you were always number one and you're all doing the right thing and winning, why, you, you may not reach out as much. But when you're losing and things aren't, you know, as good, you might reach out for help and make more connections and, you know, it gets you ahead. Get, it's wealthy. It, that's wealth. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I have so much, like I, I think of um, when I knew this was coming up, it really made me do a lot of reading into the opportunities of losing. And that is such a, the opportunity to lose. You learn so much more. So I just, I thank you for sharing those stories. It just, it makes us pause and think. Yeah, well, and, and the thing is, I mean, put it this way. I mean, you're an immigrant. You got to learn the lesson, right? I mean, you yeah. need to learn that you're not in the same country that you were. You need to learn the rules. Of course, I made a ton of mistakes when I came. 
obviously not pronouncing words properly, you know, and, and that, that that already, you know, gives you a disadvantage in many things. So, but I mean, don't be, don't get discouraged. I think it's the, pro- the problem is getting discouraged and living in fear. Oh, why, what if this happens? And you know what, I mean, God never promised us to go through life without <laughs> having bad moments. I don't yeah. think that is the plan. I think the plan is how do you deal with them when you get them? Yeah. Um, I When I think of you coming here, that was big. And when you, you know, and then I think of when you think big, you will lose big. You know, if, 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 you're, if you're a big thinker, there are big losses to be had. But, on, but think about it. If you think small, you lose small. It doesn't seem as much. And we... I know for me personally, sometimes I don't think big enough, you know, hmm. and maybe I'm, I'm afraid of the big loss. That's, that's a tough one to swallow. Well, and the thing is, put it this way. I mean, I think losing, I mean, you have to mitigate risk and there is a component there that you can probably try to, you know, mitigate in a way, but it doesn't matter how much you plan sometimes. I mean, there will be days in which, the, you know, the gray day will always come. And, you know, what are you going to do about it? I mean, life isn't yeah. fair. Life, life yeah. has never been fair. And the sooner you realize that, <laughs> the better we'll, it'll be for you eventually. So that's what I tell my kids all the time because they come and they, I, am, I am about to buy a big bowl of cheese for the wine they bring every day. So, you know, and then, and, you know, I'm just gonna, about to have that cheese with me. And it's like, listen, life is not fair. There is just a one toy. And guess what? It's red and you both want it. So you have to learn how to share and isn't yeah. fair. No, it is not fair, but I'm not going to go and buy another toy just because you want it red today. And what, what about you? What if you want it green tomorrow? I'm not going to have that. I mean, life life is not going to be like that. So, yeah, I, don't, I, I think living in the world that you're not to be, supposed to be spoiled, you're not supposed to be just the, the world doesn't turn around you. It doesn't go around you. No, you have to go with the flow. And then you have to learn that, you know, you're not the center of the, you're not the, the, the center of the world, the center of the universe. Unfortunately, today, people are told that they can be and do and, and have whatever they want. And I think that is a misconception because that will eventually collapse because when you become the center of the universe, you will be stepping on somebody else's universe at some point. Oh. And then you will be needed, you will be need you will be needing to get someone to approve what you're doing, even though you don't accept it. And then you get into those type of cycles that are not healthy for a society. So I do believe that it's right for us to give a little bit of you know comfort to people, to my kids, for example, they have everything they need, but they don't have everything they want. You see what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I think that is important. Oh, and you know, Fausto, great lesson for not only our children, but the people we, we, we lead, the people we work with, our friends, like there's a lesson there. So thanks for sharing. Not so as part, of, yeah, as part of this podcast, we always want to see how people integrate um, their spiritual into their personal professional. So have you, have you always um, had faith or, because I mean, obviously coming on this podcast, I knew that I knew you had it, but I don't know how you got there. So can you tell us a little bit about, you know, is this something new for you? How did you get to a place of faith? Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a great and fantastic question. I love love sharing uh, always, you know, my my spiritual background. So yeah, no, I did never, I, I didn't want to have a faith. I mean, my family always kind of had some level of faith. I always saw my dad trying to integrate his life, you know, into a faithful community. I always saw my parents trying, you know, to do it, but I, I was never into it. I, I never appreciated it. I, I, I didn't see it, you know, as a necessity for me. Yeah. However, you know, remember the story I told you about my dad coming to Honduras because I was about to commit suicide and all that. Well, that's the moment that when something happened, I did get a level of faith and, and then it's like I got faithful enough to step into the next level because of my dad. Because what happened is he, like my, my parents never had a perfect relationship growing up and no, no one has, not even, no, no one has a perfect relationship. But my parents' uh, relationship was very dysfunctional with me growing up. It was, it was not healthy. And um, they moved to the U.S. I stayed in Honduras. I finished my career. I was making money. Things were doing great. Then I got divorced. Things collapsed. 
And then my parent, my, my dad came and then when he came, he actually told me, hey, listen, I wanted to let you know that, um, you know, I love you and you don't have to struggle alone. But right after he said that there was this perfect moment in which he said something that I would never forget. And he said, Fausa, you wanted to let you know that your mom and I are very happy now and we don't have the same issues that we had before. So when he said that, I'm, I'm, I, I, I couldn't even believe it, first of all. But then the second part was like, we met a man and, and his name was Jesus, he said. And since that happened, since we got to meet him, since we got to know him, it, like, and, 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 and not only, you know, no, not in a religious way, not that we go and do like, you know, things that are, you know, awkward or no. I mean, we got to know him differently. So our life started changing. Listen. You might believe it or not, but I do think you need to get to know him. And when he said that, something something came into me. And at that moment, I, I, I knew. I knew something was about to change in my life. I knew something was about to. There was this trigger that I just needed. And, and it was that small opportunity of seeing a humble man telling me that his battles are not the same because he got to meet this one person. So when that happened... Um, my wife and I decided like, okay, this is, this is, this is, well, not my wife at that time. It was my girlfriend. Um, her and I were just talking. We were getting to know each other. And I said, listen, my dad told me this, I will move to Canada and I want to connect with God. And, you know, fortunately she said the same thing. I'm going back to Colombia. She's from Colombia. And she said, I want to do the same thing. And so she went back to Colombia. She started experiencing some faith. As soon as I got into Canada, I started, you know, attending to a church. And that's how everything started. I mean, it was, it was, it wasn't easy. It wasn't pushed. I wasn't, you know, told a lie and then got there and then realized that it wasn't what I needed. But um, I do remember I had one thing. Um, I did say, okay, if there is a God, if there is God in, 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 in this whole universe, I'll ask you to, to, to just, I'll ask you just one thing. There will be one condition for me. If you fail me once, I'll never stay with you again. And it's been 10 years and he's been pretty faithful. <laughs> I gave him the ultimatum. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I appreciate you sharing that because I think some people think that, you know what, I'm going to try this. Um, and if it doesn't work, like I'm out and I, you verbalized it. I, I don't, I wonder if more people think that, but you know, thank you for sharing that. That was, that was Not good. A problem. So um, as your career progressed, you know, you've, and, and now you have faith, your career is progressing. Um, what do you feel the greatest lesson of losing has been? Understanding that life, as I was saying, life isn't fair, gives you the push to commit to your reality, right? Therefore, comparing myself to others, trying to compete on things that are not going to last forever and just achieving higher positions and are not the most component of a professional individual. That I think learning that was tough for me. After many years of, of, of just growing, and, and there is nothing wrong with that, right? I mean, uh, however, my priorities have changed. And, 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 you know, I decided to grow. And, and it was good. And it was great to, to grow professionally. But, but my, my priorities have changed. And my greatest lesson, I think, you know, spending time with the most important relationships that I have will always determine a greater outcome. I learned this from uh, from my mentor in Calgary, uh, Sam. He he always set up the priorities properly. He always told me like the most important relationship has to be my God, then the second most important relationship has to be my wife, and the third one is my kids. And the thing is, try to make it happen is not that easy. People think that oh yeah he says so and it sounds easy. It's not easy. I think dedicating and motivating yourself to go and spend time, you know, with 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 God and wife and and the kids and there are bad days for wives as well. <laughs> there are bad days for kids and 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 but the only person who never has a bad day is God. And and you get to go to him and and even when you have a bad day, I mean, he will always be calm and he will always be the one, you know, cheering up for you and then, you know, cheering you up and and and, and even cleaning those tears. Because there are days of tears and those days are important as well. 
And I think that is that is one of the biggest lessons that I have learned of losing. Yeah, you made a comment about um, position, and I, I read that as sort of status, like my position, my uh, at work. That's where my mind went. And I think of over the last three years, like my life has changed, my position has changed, and I I put so much into that that when the position and the title went away, I was nothing. And it, I was, you know, if I want to use, I was a loser, right? Because I put so much into it. And it took me a long time to, to get through that, to let go of that. I'm going to get emotional. <clears throat> but yeah, so thanks for sharing that again. <laughs> Not a okay, problem. I'll continue. I'll continue. Um, so you, I, I was, you know, stalking you because I do that with my guests. And I, I saw that on, I think it's your LinkedIn, I think, um, you you note that you're part of the John Maxwell leadership team. And yeah. um, you've been that like since 2017. So I just want to ask you the question, what made you choose the John Maxwell leadership team? What what was it about that? And yeah. Um, well, I mean, there was a, several components of, you know, during that transition in, in my life, there was a big transition in from my job. And, and obviously that position and status, yes, and I, I meant the status when I meant position in, in my previous comment. And yeah, I mean, getting your status and, and getting, you know, that thrive and, 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 you know, getting, you know, on the higher positions require me to do better. And, and people, what typical people do is they go and get a master's, right? I mean, you want to grow into the, you know, into the hierarchy of, of, of work, go and get a master's. And now you can get a PhD and now you can get, I don't know, maybe you can get two PhDs. I don't you know. But the thing is, I mean, you can, you should go and, and get your master's so you can actually see, be seen as someone more important, more qualified. And and I'm not saying that that is wrong. I mean, I, I am taking a master's. I am going through that process. I'm doing it to get yeah. better at certain skills that I need. But when your title and your life and your identity goes back into that, then you're rooted into that. And then you will see that you will achieve a lot but that meant in the end nothing. Because I am telling you, I think when you're on the last, the last five minutes of your, you know, uh, time in this earth, if you're in a hospital bed, whatever, you don't want to see your title right next to you. You don't want to see your professor right next to you. You want to see people that you care about, like your wife, your kids, your parents, and whoever else you know was important to you. And I think when you prioritize, you know, and then you will achieve even more. And, 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 and John Maxwell to me came during that timing because I was confused. I, I was, I was getting into a depression, you know, even here, even here in Canada, even though I was the one guy killing it and the one guy getting that position and that guy doing that, I knew my life was meant, you know, um, I was meant to do more. So a good mentor of mine mentioned to me the John Maxwell, you know, uh, literature, and and I found it easy to read. I started reading the first book is the 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 most important twenty one minutes of a leader, and it's like a like it's like a, a it's like a study that you do daily. You know, it's like um yeah, it's very it was very easy to swallow. So I started learning about it and. Wow, this guy is, is is an inspirator. I mean, he's inspiring so many people. He's doing so good, and 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 this is exactly what my what my soul needs. Then I immediately le- learned that he was doing the John Maxwell team. I asked my church because I am very committed to my community, and at that time I didn't even have the money. And I told them I want to do this. I want to pursue this. And the church said, "You know what? We'll pay fifty percent of it. Go do it." And then you put the other 50%. And that's what I did. And I went, well, that's a great chance. I went to Florida, got certified. It was great. It was, it was a great opportunity. Got to meet amazing leaders, amazing people. And from that moment is when the best positions came into my life. Uh, one of the most valuable ones is the, the one, I don't know if, you, if you've heard of this one. You, you probably have heard of this one. D-A-D? Dad? D-A-D? Yeah, I know dad. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I'm a MOM. <laughs> there you go. You're an MOM. I'm a I'm a DAD. So yeah, getting getting that DAD for the second time when I was already doing this, it was unreal. It was just um, I I got I got packed with emotions. I got packed with with several things. I know I knew that I could be a better world for my kids. You know, many people complain about global warming and that kind of thing. You know what? I'm going to pack that stuff up to another to another conference room. I will do my part. I will build, you know, identity for my kids. I will be that person that will lead my family. So I started doing that and then funny enough, um I started applying it into work. 
And when I did so, many people's lives change. Uh, there was this girl who, um, you know, who was struggling in life. And, 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 and I obviously, you know, I'm a human. So one day I showed up to work. She started attacking me. I got mad. I got upset. And 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 ah, uh, I calmed down. But after an hour, I I was sure she was going to listen who I was, and I was gonna put her in her place. And then just before I was approaching her, I was like probably five steps away from her. I just listened to a very mild whisper saying, "Take her for lunch." I don't n- normally do that because obviously she's a woman and I am married, so that would that would be seen on proper but um but that day i felt it like take her for lunch so i i, I told her like hey do you want to go for lunch and and she said yes 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 and she packed everything on uh, on her purse i took her to have some vietnamese food our favorite and so um our favorite at home so we went for for lunch and then she started telling me uh, immediately uh, uh we sat down and she just said hey i, I wanted to share with you that um, this morning um i was upset and because I am nervous, because my kid is, is cutting herself every day. And every day I am coming home, I not, I am not sure if I am going to see my kid alive again. My kid is cutting, I am having pain, I, uh, she is taking pills, and sometimes she overdoses herself, and, 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 and it's, it's something that I don't know how to deal with. She started sobbing, and, and I remember, what can I do for it? The only question that came out of my mouth, and I didn't even know why he asked it, but I said, so what can I do for you? And, and then she, she said, I don't know. I don't even know how to be helped. And, you know, when you are in that circumstance, when you know that you have a condition that you need to be able to confront and you know that you need to, you know, get better at it. And, and so one, one thing I did is like, okay, let me see what I can do. So I started praying and, and I just felt like, um, you know, do something through her boss. So I was already in, in a good position in my company. So I went to her boss and said, hey, listen, I need, I need a favor. And uh, the the boss said, okay, yeah, tell me what you need. And, and, and I said, I need you to give her a raise. And I need, the, I need her to go through school, to go to school because she's not making enough. And therefore she is in bad, in bad, in bad shape and, and she has issues at home and she has to be more present with her kid. He saw me and he's like, are you asking me that favor for you or for her? And I said, for me. And that's when I discovered that you put yourself to serve others. Okay, and that and that's when you have to lose sometimes. I could have asked her for a raise for myself, but when you ask for someone else, you get a whole more different reward. You know, that girl got the raise, went through school, had the capacity to spend more time with her kid, and then she was just thankful. She started sobbing. She thanked me several times, and 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 that is great. But that is just one example of what you can do when you're actually, you know, in line with your leadership status, and when you know that leading is not to lead for having minions, but to lead because you have followers, and then you want to, you know, be that person that will be there, you know. And so, yeah, it it yeah, it was amazing. It's amazing what I what I got out of it. So, yeah, I would. Totally recommend it to everyone. I mean, the John Maxwell team is amazing, and and yeah, I think it did a, a lot of the things that I that I needed in order to grow. And by the way, which reminds me, a quick little story. One day, this gal sat down in front of me. She was a pinch. I wasn't even a pinch already, but I was already a VP of a company. And 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 one day, I said, "Hey, you know, um, I don't even remember. Well, I do remember her name, but I don't want to say it. But I just said, "Hey, wh- how come you're not in my position? I mean, you are." way better educated than I am. I would like, I would like you to be, my, I would like you to be the one who replaced me. And then she's just, she just saw me and I, I could see her about to cry. And she just said, you know what? Because your leadership is stronger than mine. And that's why you are where you are. And sometimes people think that your leadership is, is, is just something that, yeah, will eventually come to you. No, when you have to nurture that section of your life and then you get to lead others, give life to others. And yeah, I think I want to share that. Yeah. Good. Oh, good story. So um, I want to talk to you a little bit about Leader Impact. Is this a Leader Impact podcast? You were part of a group in Calgary, I believe. Um, What do you feel is the greatest part about being involved with other marketplace leaders? 
What's the best part of that for you? Um, the best part to be involved with other marketplace leaders, transparency. Transparency. Because the capacity to be vulnerable without being judged, hey, I mean, where do you get that? You know, you don't get that anywhere. Sometimes you want to be vulnerable to your wife. Sometimes your wife is having a bad day, you know, and then you got to recognize that people are, you know, are people, people are people. I mean, they have, you know, flaws and we all have. So I think the greatest thing would be that because we get to talk about everything. We we certainly, you know, enjoy and, and recognize, you know, mistakes in a safe environment, right? So I think it's key to my development and, and you know, by far, by far, I would, I would suggest that, you know, just being open, having the opportunity to be transparent to someone, you know, that, you know, might my, my, my know that you have been, or maybe he has been through that process as well, is a great asset. It's just a great yeah. asset. Good. So um, are you in a group? You're in a group right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Are you studying a certain book or are you doing a certain study right now? And what is it? Absolutely. We're, we're reading uh, Integrity oh. from Henry Cloud. <laughs> I was like, I know that by one because I'm on boundaries yeah. by Henry, Dr. Henry Cloud. Yeah, oh. it's a great book. Yeah. And are it's you... Great, well, great author, right? That you, well, you know yeah. about it as well. Yeah. <laughs> and what is it? What is it? I mean, it's is it just about integrity or like, can you give me a quick synopsis? Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, it'll, it'll be very, very, you know, um, I'll give you the synopsis. I mean, essentially, is the only way you can actually achieve the reality in your life. I mean, not only, in the only way to, to, to um, how much can I put it? Like, uh, um, I think it'll be the, I think he calls it integrity is the only way where you can commit, you know, truly to your reality is by having integrity. So when talking about integrity, people think, oh, I saw a $20 bill in the street and I didn't grab it. I'm, I have so much integrity, but sometimes, I mean, we, 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 we misread the conception and having integrity is go, it goes deeper than that. It's actually putting yourself to the service of others without expecting something back. That's having integrity. And, you know, uh, putting your money where your mouth is, that's having integrity. You know, I mean, there are things that, you know, you get to pick out of the book, you know? Yeah. And some sticks with you. And I find, uh, I got to reread the book a few times. <laughs> Because it just sticks with you different ways at different times of your life and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So um, two more things before we are done. Uh, Leader impact, as you know, is dedicated to leaders having a lasting impact. And as you continue to move through your own journey of life, have you considered what you want your faith legacy to be when you leave this world? Yes. Uh, If if I can put it on a word, it would be freedom. I would love to be considered a man who, who brought freedom. And, 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 you know, many people might say, well, I'm pretty free. <laughs> I get to do whatever I want. And I, and I think in each area of your life, I mean, you have goals, right? I mean, for example, financially speaking, you want to be free. You know, family, family wise, you want to have the freedom to do stuff with your, with your wife. But I, I think, you know, understanding that freedom and boundaries go hand by hand and understand it that even though you get the right to do whatever you want and you can spend the money the way you want it, but then there is a perfect way in which you can actually operate in your life. And that way is you actually allow God and, and you understand, you start understanding that when you allow God to forgive you is, is when you can actually be free because many people think, why does God forgive us? And, and then put it this way. I mean, why does God want to forgive you? He wants to forgive you because he wants to see you free, you know? And once you're free, you just become unstoppable. That, that's it. It's simple. You, you become unstoppable. But you need to be free, free from lies. And, and, you know, for many years I called it or impact a lie removal tool. It helped me to see the reality because I, I was lost. I was lost. I didn't know. I didn't have value. I thought I had to struggle in life because I was such a terrible kid. I was, I was so terrible to my parents for many, many years. I, I thought I deserve this. I deserve to, to, to be no one, to be a nobody. But then I came to Leader Impact and then people started removing those lies. I started listening to important people telling me I was important. So guess what? I yeah. believe them. You believe wow. them. And that's what you need. That's exactly what, what I want to be and what I want to be. I want to be that person. Yeah. And, you know, you can't just hear it once. 
we and that's why we keep going back is you have to hear it again because you know it's not going to sink in you, you know you need to go back and and then and then you know like you one day will then be that person that turns to someone and says the good things and and inspires them to step up and be a leader so my last question for all my guests is what brings you the greatest joy serving others serving others i think that there is buying nice things getting nice toys that's fun i mean you get to enjoy them but then they go back to the shed that you have in the backyard or you know you get to you get to store them somewhere i think you know uh spending time serving others and it starts at home starts with wife it starts with kids and then it goes on and on and on to you know to the outside but but yeah i think serving others and you know building relationships i love that that brings me joy oh fausto my cheeks hurt from smiling so much <laughs> <laughs> so i want to thank you for taking the last 45 minutes and sharing with us um you have i i was excited to be here today i'm excited for all the podcasts i feel like it's it's just such a great learning moment um, so thank you for just sharing more about you losing life and what are you going to do about it? I just really appreciate you. Thank you, Fausto. You should write a book called The Loser, right? <laughs> I mean, I would love that title. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll think of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, my All book, right. I'm thinking about, you know, I have to write my book about the title in my book called, called, called The Loser. Oh. Well, it's going to be a great book because it's going to be all the positive sides of losing, the good things, the exactly. value. So, yeah. Absolutely. So, um, Absolutely. Obviously, we've come to the end of our podcast. And if people want to um, reach out to you, how can they find you? Uh, I think LinkedIn will be the easiest one. You can just go click connect and then, uh, yeah, sh just share a comment, you know, send me a, a message and, and we'll be able to reach out. That's awesome. And that's Fausto Estrada. You can find him LinkedIn. And that's where I found you and, you know, stalked you a little bit. So you are there and you're easy to find. There you go. All right. Well, thank you again, Fausto. It has been awesome to have you for 45 minutes. Thank you right. so much, Lisa. Have a great day. All right. Well, this ends our podcast. I want to thank you all for joining us. If you are part of Leader Impact, you can always discuss or share this podcast with your group. And if you're not yet in a Leader Impact group, we would love to have you. Check out groups available in Canada at leaderimpact.ca. Or if you're listening from anywhere else in the world, check, our leader impact, check out leaderimpact.com or get in touch with us by email, info at leaderimpact.ca, and we will connect you. And if you like this podcast, please leave us a comment, give us a rating or a review. This will help other global leaders find our podcast. Thank you for engaging with us. And remember, impact starts with you.